What can companies do to better monitor geopolitical risk? I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Brightpath. And in this week's Weekly Insights, I want to talk about how companies can do exactly that. What are some tools, what are some strategies, what are some things that you can do to better monitor geopolitical risk? We think this is crucial for large organizations. If you are in any way operating globally or you are dependent upon a global supply chain, even if you don't think the geopolitical issues impact you, they still probably do. And this is going to be important to you. So let's go through 10 things that you can do. The first one is that you can have a dedicated team that looks at this. You can call it your geopolitical risk analysis team. You could call it your global intelligence team. It could be a capability within your global security operations center. But the th key thing is that you've assigned a team or, or a group of folks to have the responsibility for monitoring and analyzing geopolitical risk. That team needs to have a deep understanding of things like international affairs, political science, economics, global security, related topics. Otherwise, they're not going to have the expertise they really need to process and understand this kind of information. Number two, you can leverage open source intelligence. Utilizing publicly available data like international news, social media, government reports, you can gather near real-time information on geopolitical events and trends. You do not have to go subscribe to some super expensive services to get the outcome that you're after, to get to the information that you're really looking for. You can do it with a lot of free open source information. Number three, engage in scenario planning. You can develop and regularly update your scenarios and their plans based on potential geopolitical events. This includes envisioning various outcomes, things that may happen, uh, and how those would then impact your business, helping you with your contingency planning and your business continuity planning. Number four, you can collaborate with experts and think tanks and even government agencies. Um, geopolitical experts, academic institutions, and think tanks often publish free information, and they're often more than willing to talk with you about that information. They hold webinars for free in a lot of cases. These entities and experts can give you valuable insight and analyses that might not be available through the standard news channel. You're not going to get a deep analysis from watching CNN or MSNBC. You're going to need to talk to an expert or a think tank. Number five, you can use some geopolitical risk assessment tools. Now, this is if you want to spend the money, but even simple tools like a GIS system can help you analyze and visualize geopolitical risk. But there are obviously other tools on the market like Alert Media or NC4, uh, an Everbridge product that can give you more real-time uh, risk and intelligence information. Number six, you can network. You can network with your peers and with industry groups. Um, industry groups um, in your particular industry or your particular field um, often have forums and webinars and conference calls where you can share insights and best practices. And networking with your peers can provide you with a broader perspective and the experience of others to understand how companies are handling similar risks. Number seven, an output of this should be that you review and update your business continuity and crisis management plans. That you're looking at these plans and you're making sure that they're up to date considering potential impact of geopolitical risks. Number eight is that you should conduct regular risk assessments of your organizations, particularly your facilities, your supply chain, and your dependency on vendors and technology providers. Where are they located and how are they protecting their workforce and capabilities? That should include evaluating for impact on your supply chain, your market access, your regulatory compliance, as examples. Number nine is you need to watch for regulatory changes. You need to monitor legislative and regulatory changes in countries where your business operates. Changes in laws and regulations can happen quickly, um, and in some countries more quickly than others, uh, and they can significantly impact your strategy and operations. And number 10 is that you want to foster a culture of risk awareness in your organization. You need to cultivate a company culture where employees at all levels understand the importance of geopolitical risk and that they're encouraged to stay informed, report, and act upon those potential risks. 
These strategies can really help you navigate the complex and unpredictable landscape of geopolitical risk. And remember that the key here is not just to monitor the risk and then become aware that there's an issue, but also to be prepared to quickly adapt and respond uh, by changing your strategies and responding to these risks as they occur. That's it for this video of our th this weekly insights video. We'll be back next week with another new episode of our weekly insights. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.